Hey, what's up guys? This is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Today I wanted to make a video to show you how I am heating my RV camper here with a hot water heater. Now this is in a situation where the RV is stationary for the winter, it's not moving. So I'm building my house and I'm living in the camper next to the house and I wanted to find a way to heat the camper more efficiently than with a propane tank. So I'll show you what I'm doing. Alright guys, the next thing I wanted to show you quick is if you come in the door right there, there's a kitchen sink. This is where my heater is set up, is under the sink right here. This is the only spot I had. And so what I did actually, you can see that little door is turned upside down. It's just to kind of help close up the space. Because what it was is the little door was here and the big door is here. So I was thinking this is just kind of a temporary setup for the winter time. I wanted to think about like resale for the camper and things like that. So basically here I have this hydronic hot water heater. It's called, it's a hanging hot water heater. It's just basically a radiator and it has a fan behind it. I can't really show the fan because it's kind of back in there. It was plumbed for copper so I just went shark bite. It's from shark bite from copper to pex here. And so what I did is I brought the hot one in the bottom as you can see. Brought the cold one back out the top. Oh, it's going to kick on right now so you can hear it. It's a little bit on the loud side, but I have it set on medium. I'll show you what I mean here. So you can hear it running, but man, that thing throws a lot of heat. Okay guys, I wanted to show you my setup here, what I had to do. Like I said, this is temporary for the winter and I didn't want to make holes in the camper and all that kind of stuff more than I had to. So I just ran a cord up over here, excuse the mess, up over here. This is the closest outlet, believe it or not, in the camper right here. So this is what it's plugged into. So I wanted to talk quick about this Lux thermostat here. I really like this one. One reason I chose it is a lot of people recommend it and I wanted something that would take care of itself while I am away and not have to worry about plugging it in to get heat or worrying about wiring up a thermostat. This is quick and easy. You can program it for different days of the week or the weekends and stuff. I just leave it on regular and have it on heat. It has the on off switch here. So it has a temperature sensor right here. And so it works really well. You can set the temp right here on this side and this tells you what the temp is right now. And then, yeah, so it just plugs into the outlet and then you plug whatever you want to control in here. And like I said, in my instance, I ran an extension cord over to a splitter, which it controls the circulating pump and the fan on the heater at the same time. So I highly recommend this, and I'll link to this in the video description below the video too, so you can find it. So then that's my closest outlet, so that's where I had to plug into, and I had to run the cord up over the door and down here. And then it runs in here under the sink. So this is my fan controller that I was showing you. I ended up buying this separately, and I'll include a link in the video description where I found this. This worked out really well to control the fan. This fan here only has one speed on the heater, and so this was nice to be able to turn it down and still throw a lot of heat. The circulating pump down below is plugged in here, which I'll show you that in a minute. And then I did a splitter here. This is coming in from the thermostat, so this brings power in. And then what it does is it kicks on the fan for the heater and the circulating pump at the same time. So it's circulating the water and blowing air at the same time. Otherwise, when it doesn't demand for heat, all it's doing is keeping the water up the temp out in the hot water heater. So this is nice because it takes care of itself with that Lux thermostat. So it may seem a little complicated, but it's really not. This is just the cord for the circulating pump. Cord come in, bring power, and the fans just plugged into here. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you is you can see I got my hot water heater on the left there and it's actually kind of big for this setup. It's a 40 gallon, but that's what I got my hands on. So in that cargo hold right beside the steps there coming down, you can see I have my circulating pump. All right guys, so here's my circulating pump right here. And I wanted to show you this one. This is kind of a cheaper one. It's not like a Grunfoss or something. It's a Badger is the pump. It works really well for this. I'll include a link in the video description for this guy. Anything that I got here, I got online, so I wanted to show you, except for the hot water heater. So I'll include links for those. And this is a three-speed pump. I run it on the second speed, on the middle speed, so far. So what I did is I just, yeah, ran the hot water one up, circulating pump, this is my return. And you might wonder what this line is here. This is actually, it has a shutoff valve under in here. This is actually where it feeds it in from the RV water supply. So it keeps the thing up to pressure at all times and so it's full in case it has any air that works out of the system. Once it's up and going, it shouldn't really, but the other thing that's important here is I have a check valve in here. This is just a push to connect fitting, like a shark bite fitting, 
and it has a check valve in it so it can't push the water back through the cold supply. It has to go back to the tank here. So I want to show you that. That's very important that you get that. Anyway, so my lines run in behind there. This is why I wanted to show you this. See, I wanted to think about resale value and making holes and stuff through the camper. So then it runs underneath here, and I'll try to show you that. And then it comes out into the hot water heater. And it just runs right up to the hot water heater. So you have a better idea of how I ran my lines. They're actually really short. They're about eight or 10 feet total. I didn't insulate these ones in here yet, but I definitely wanted to insulate the ones going out to the hot water heater. So you can see here's my 40 gallon hot water heater. It's electric. That's my best heating option at this point. It's better than propane, cheaper here. So what I did is I built a plywood box around this thing. Like I said, it just has to last one season during the winter. If you want it to last longer, you could build it out of steel or something, put some steel roofing on the outside of it. I left just a little room between the camper there, and I left a little room in case the propane furnace needs to run. And then I insulate it with two inch rigid foam all the way around. You can see I opened it up just to show you here. It gets two inch foam on the top and all the way around the side, so that kind of helps so it doesn't have to run as much. And I also insulated the lines here, and I'm gonna do a better job of that, but I wanna show you that. And then this is also very important that you get an air eliminator and put it on the highest point. Since I got such a tall hot water heater, this is the highest point. So I put it on here. This is a Kalefi. I'll show you the box for it. It's made in Italy and it's a really good brand. I've heard a lot of good reviews about it. So I'll, I'll link to where you can find one of those too if you want. I just got one that has eighth inch national pipe thread and I went from half inch to eighth inch. You can get adapters and stuff. So I got all that done. So I put that on there and you could hear the air coming out when I was filling the tank. I guess the one thing that I wanted to mention quick yet is that under here where the elements are, it has a top and bottom element in this. I started out at 120 degrees and it didn't seem like it was quite hot enough so I bumped it up to 140 degrees. These can go all the way up to 150 and you can adjust them under those covers there by the elements. And what I did on the back side here is I just ran the electric right in there and I'm going to grate stuff around there so it insulates that as well when I grate stuff around all the other holes. So now depending on what size heater you use, if you use a 40 gallon like I am, you're going to need a double 30 breaker like this to hook up for that 10-3 wire that you're using. So you may have noticed that I use some shark bite or push to connect fittings. These ones here in some of the hard to reach places and then I use some of the crimp ring fittings for some of the easier places to get to. Well, these are very expensive so I would only use those when you have to. Like when you're adapting from copper on that hot water heater to PEX or in hard to reach places where you can't crimp because these are a lot more cost effective, these kind of fittings and the rings there. But those push to connect fittings are really awesome when you do need them. Like the reason that I used some of both was, yeah, just I mainly used the push to connect shark bank fittings where it was really hard to get to. So a few tools that I would recommend if you're going to do this is number one, this PEX crimp tool. This is the Shark Bite brand. I really like this one. It's really easy to change the tips. This thing does from 3 8 to 1 inch, as you can see. So you may wonder what this thing is. It's for removing the rings in case you mess up. This is a very handy tool to have. They're very inexpensive. It's a crimp ring tool remover. And then the other one is this PEX cutter right here. You don't have to get the Milwaukee brand. That's just the one that I had. But having a PEX pipe cutter like that, it's so much easier than using a utility knife. Now, utility knife's all you got, great. So just do with what you got. But I would recommend these, so I'll link to any of these tools in the video description that I think might be helpful to you. This is the top view once I have the sides all on, so you can see it's insulated really well down in there. So hopefully this video wasn't too lengthy, I just wanted to share everything that I could think of. So if you have any questions, you can always leave comments below the video. Alright guys, well I hope this video was helpful to you. I try to show it the best I can, like I said, it's not the best for lighting and all that show inside the camper. I hope it inspired some ideas of how you can rig up your own heater if you need to. Like I said, it keeps the camper toasty and warm so far. I haven't gone through the really cold part of winter, but it's been really chilly at night and it's kept it just fine. So I hope I was able to show this so it made sense to you and give you an idea. It's just an idea that I thought up one day and I was like, hey, I'm gonna heat my camper with electric hot water heater and some hot water. It's more efficient to heat water than it is just to heat air. And I got tired of buying propane for the camper because it goes through a lot and it's a lot more of a moist heat. This is a lot drier heat too, which is better for condensation and everything in your camper. So if this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would help me out a lot. Make sure to turn the bell notification on so that way you get notified when I release new videos and hope this was helpful. All right, thanks for watching guys.